Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Collini, and welcome to another episode of Ask the Scientist. This show is about busting myths, bringing you the truth. Well, as market trends always change, supplement companies are always looking for new ways to come out with new products. The problem is, most of the time, they feed us with a bunch of lies um, and try to steer us away from things that work and steer us toward what they are trying to sell us. One of the popular things that are resurfacing, and the reason why I say resurfacing, is we used to do these back when I first started in the 80s. And these are called amino acids. Right now, it's the EAAs, or the essential amino acids. Um, these are amino acids that your body does not produce, therefore you must get them from an external source um, in order to fuel your muscle growth. So, is taking EAAs beneficial? Absolutely, it kind of fills in the gap, um, maybe to your protein sources, because not all proteins are, are complete proteins. And again, I'm a fan of EAAs, but they're kind of a supplement. Um, I would use those more you know, in the evening or maybe as a, as a post-workout to help with recovery. Now, what these supplement companies who are coming out with these are claiming is that don't do BCAAs because those are counterproductive, they don't work. Newsflash, essential amino acids contain BCAAs. <laughs> now, BCAAs are a whole different animal. When you train, basically you are expending amino acids. And the three amino acids that are tore down, ripped up, burned up, whatever you want to call it, are these BCAAs, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. So you need to take a BCAA supplement by itself. You mix it with other things, it is no longer a BCAA. You mix it with other aminos, you are now slowing down the absorption and you're basically messing up the whole idea behind a BCAA. Now it needs to be in a 2-1-1 ratio. Don't let anybody steer you that you gotta take more leucine because again, you defeat the whole BCAA purpose. Now, I like to get BCAAs in during pre-workout or during training. Now you can take them post-training. Again, anytime around that workout that you can get BCAAs in. If you're on a diet, you're getting ready for a show, you should be taking BCAAs two to three times a day. Again, that's your assurance factor that you're not going to burn muscle for energy. So for the companies that are saying BCAAs are outdated, counterproductive to muscle growth is absolutely false. But in the same token, that doesn't mean EAAs are bad. They're two different things. That's like saying, don't use creatine anymore, only take whey protein. Come on, folks, we're a lot smarter than that. You know, if budget allows, then I can tell you how to use BCAAs and EAAs in the same cycle. But again, you've got to take what you can afford. So again, I would highly recommend taking BCAAs like EFX Sports Training Ground, which um, has my new patented Aminozorb BCAA technology, complete, stable, buffered, enzymatically processed BCAAs. Great, so you don't need to take that much. As a matter of fact, if you'd like to try a sample you haven't, send me an email. I'd love to get you out some free samples to try. And, by the way, EFX Sports is coming out with EAAs, and I'm gonna completely show you when and how to do those. So, everything is good, depends on what your goals are, Anytime somebody tells you this is now outdated, you now want to do this, I would do a little bit of research and I wouldn't listen to those brands or those companies. 